I'm Julian Halcox, I'm Professor of Cardiology at Swansea University Medical School. I'm a clinical cardiologist with an interest in cardiac disease prevention. So what are the major advances in the treatment of dyslipidemia? Well, I think before we talk about some of the positive stories, it's important to reflect on perhaps some of the, the less salubrious outcomes. Firstly, the, uh, the failure of two really important uh, clinical strategies, the use of niacin and also the use of CTP antagonism. So niacin, for example, it increases uh, HDL cholesterol levels, reduces triglycerides to a certain extent and has a small impact on, uh, on LDL and total cholesterol. But interestingly, we've seen in very large-scale clinical trials a, a neutral impact on cardiovascular outcomes in an all-comers population of high-risk patients on statin, but also specifically in individuals with uh, low HDL cholesterol in whom one might consider that they would be more likely to derive a beneficial effect from niacin therapy when added on top of a statin by virtue of the increased residual risk seen in these patients. But unfortunately that wasn't to be the case. When it comes to the uh, story of the CTP antagonist, three out of four of the, of the, the agents that have been tested out in large-scale clinical trials have already fallen by the wayside. The first, torcetrapib, which failed possibly due to off-target effects. Uh, it, there was an increase in cardiovascular events that seemed to be independent of its effect on the lipids. But also with two other agents, dalcetropib and uh, evacetropib, most recently evacetropib, these trials were discontinued due to uh, the lack of any beneficial signal being, uh, being seen at, at the stage of analysis that, that they'd, they'd got to. The question really is whether CTP antagonism is a strategy that's going to improve outcomes. Now, going back to my initial points on HDL cholesterol levels being associated epidemiologically with, with outcome, one might confer that having high levels of HDL cholesterol level would be associated with a benefit. But actually, we see with the CTP antagonists, although they raise HDL cholesterol levels quite substantially, in these three, stu three, stu three studies so far, there doesn't seem to have been a beneficial effect. And that's perhaps because of the nature of the, uh, the effect of CTP antagonism. The CTP is a, an agent that uh, facilitates the translocation of cholesterol ester and triglyceride between ApoB-containing lipoproteins and the ApoA lipoprotein. So it, it retains the cholesterol ester within the HDL particles and uh, retains triglyceride within the, uh, the LDL, the, the, the ApoB-containing lipoproteins, if, if it's inhibited. So what we see is more, H, uh, more cholesterol within the HDL subfraction, which doesn't necessarily improve its function. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's uh, increased rate of reverse cholesterol transport. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a clinically significant impact on function, and perhaps even a deleterious effect in, on function. We're still waiting, of course, for the results of the HPS3 study, which is testing out anisetropib in a huge population of patients, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. But judging by the effect of the first the effect seen in the first three studies, I'm not holding out any hopes there. There's also some interest returning to the omega-3 fatty acid story, which I think is a, on a positive note. We know that uh, in a, a couple of fairly large trials conducted recently with low-dose omega-3 supplementations, one gram a day, which doesn't really have much of an appreciable effect on triglyceride and uh, levels of, uh, of the LDL in, in the system, that uh, there was no significant benefit on outcomes. However, retrospective analysis of a large study called the GLIS study that looked at just under two grams of EPA suggested that there was a beneficial impact on cardiovascular outcomes, particularly in a subgroup analysis of individuals with the low levels of HDL and high levels of triglyceride who tend to have more, more atherogenic lipoproteins. There's triglyceride-rich lipoproteins are very abundant, which are associated with uh, a greater preponderance of small, dense LDL, which is more atherogenic, gets into the vessel wall more easily, stays in the vessel wall more readily. And in these individuals, the omega-3 intervention, a higher dose intervention with a more substantial impact on triglyceride levels and uh, the atherogenic lipoprotein biology, this seemed to have a beneficial effect. There's been a couple of new omega-3 agents developed recently, a 
a, a compound which is a semi-synthetic EPA which is currently marketed in America for treatment of hypertriglyceridemia called Vasepa and then a new agent which has again just been licensed in, in the US called Epinova which is a, a, a fatty acid preparation rather than a ethyl ester or, or triglyceride preparation of, of EPA and these agents seem to have fairly profound effects on, uh, on triglyceride levels and on the atherogenic sort of triglyceride rich lipoproteins and these agents are being tested out in large uh, adequately powered outcome trials in high risk patients. It may be a little while before they, uh, they present but judging by the effects of the GLIS study using higher doses that really have an, an appreciable effect on the atherogenic lipoprotein biology, I think this could be uh, quite an interesting thing to look out for.